Last week, we looked at how to process the herdat2 file into a pandas data frame. This week, we're going to take it a little bit further, plot some of that data on a map, and even start looking at how we can plot it with things like Boki. Welcome to another MapPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, we're going to finish up looking at the Herdat2 dataset. So if you remember last week, we read it in using pandas and some other processing techniques. And if you haven't watched that video, I encourage you to go back and watch it first. This week, we're going to plot some of that data using matplotlib and cartopy. And then we're also going to start plotting it with Boki and explore while it may be interactive, it may not be the best for this type of data. All right, so let's get started. You might notice that something's a little bit different and I have added the max wind speed. So that's just the next element in our line of information. So max speed, I am getting that element, stripping any white space and casting it to be a float. Likewise, when we are parsing that into a data frame, I add max speed to the column names so that we have it out here. Okay then, so let's get to making a plot. Of course, we're going to need more imports. So I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, import cartopy.crs as ccrs, import cartopy.feature as C feature and use our matplotlib inline magic. Okay, so now we need to set up some coordinate reference systems, which would be what we're going to plot our map in and what our data are in. So our plot CRS, I'm going to use the Lambert conformal, again using tab completion there. I'm going to set the central longitude to be minus 100, central latitude to be 45. For the data CRS, since these are just lat lons, plot curry. So now we have those CRSs set up and we're ready to make a figure. My fig is plot.figure. I'm going to set a fig size of 6 by 6. And now we're going to create an axis using plot.subplot. We want one row, one column, and this is the first plot. And then we add that extra argument of projection which is what CRS do we want our plot in? Well, we want it in our plot CRS. I'm gonna set the extent, which remember this is left side, bottom, right side, top. So minus 100, minus 37. Remember this is left side, right side, bottom, top. So minus 100 minus 37, 12, and 52. And again, we need to specify what coordinate system this is in because we could be specifying it in Lambert Conic conformal coordinates or even some other system. So we could say plat curry here, or we could just say in our data CRS. We're going to add some coastlines because after all, this is a hurricane data set at one to 50 million. I'm going to specify a black edge color and a line width of three quarters of a point. I'm also going to use the add feature to add C feature dot states with a line width of a half. Now let's just write a loop to go over every unique storm and plot it. So I'm going to say for storm number in our data frame, storm number dot unique, 
then we're going to limit that data frame to be, I'll call it storm data. So it's where the storm number is equal to the storm number that we're currently working on. Finally, we can plot. So I'm going to axe.plot storm data lawn storm data lat. What else do we need to specify? Write a transform. And our transform is our data coordinate reference system. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. And we need to have a GE and edge color and an X there instead of AD. Again, these kind of typos are very common. As you saw, you get very long tracebacks. It's sometimes a little hard to find until you know how to read those tracebacks. Now we've got a lot of storms, so this is going to take just a little bit to plot. We've got a warning, but that's okay. And there you can see we have quite the spaghetti mess. Now this is not just hurricanes, this is everything, really. If you look at the HERDAT manual, there are all kinds of things recorded here, even things down to just waves or disturbances. So let's go back and limit this data set a little bit. So I'm going to create a hurricane data frame, which is going to be the data frame where the storm status is equal to the code HU, which in the manual for this data set indicates hurricane. Furthermore, there's still going to be a lot of storms. I'm going to limit the hurricane data frame so DFHU to where DFHU time is greater than date time 2020 minus 10, 1, 1. So that's going to limit to the past 10 years. That's why I wrote 2020 minus 10, just so it would be easier to change that and have, okay, I want the last 20 years, for example. So what we're doing is we're limiting to hurricanes, and then we're limiting those hurricanes to hurricanes within the last 10 years. Don't forget to go in your loop, and we're going to change from DF to DFHU. And now let's run that plot. It plots much quicker because we only have a handful of storms now, though really that's still quite a few for just the past decade. We can do one more thing though. Let's make these storms have dots for where they were located at and color those dots by the wind speed. We'll also make the track length a constant color, but make it weaker if the storm's path was shorter. So after we get our storm data, I'm going to say track length, and this is making some assumptions about there being evenly spaced time observations, which we know is not necessarily going to be true, but it's an okay proxy for trying to get a plot that looks like what we want. I'm going to make that the length of storm data. I'm going to then color every line to be tab blue, and I'm going to set the alpha to be track length divided by 55, which that comes from looking through the data and seeing how many data points are collected on various storms and finding that 55 is a reasonable track length for something that's quite long. Now what are we going to do about our colored dots? Let's plot that and make sure it works. Yep, so we see the longer storms are darker and the shorter storm tracks are much lighter but still visible. Great. Okay, so let's add our scatter markers. We're going to save a handle to them as s ax dot scatter storm data longitude storm data latitude the transform is the data CRS the color is going to be storm data max speed. Notice I'm using C because I want to color the dots individually instead of color, meaning I want to color all of the dots a given color. Finally, I'm going to go in and pick a vmin of 40 
and a VMAX of 150 just to set the limits on that color bar. I'm going to make the markers a little bit smaller and use the reds C map. Finally, we can add a color bar with reference to our handle S. And there we go. Now we've got these lines of track that are varying in shade with roughly the track length. Also, we've got a color mapped marker where you can see storms intensifying and then ramping down after landfall. If you look in here, there's really some pretty fascinating tracks out here as well. Okay, so let's really quickly look at Bokeh, which is really great for doing a lot of XY plotting and interactive data exploration, but still doesn't really have a good way to do mapping. Yes, you can take something like a shapefile that has the state outlines and put it on a Bokeh plot, but it's really just an XY plot. It's plot curry, which really isn't a map projection at all. But I want to show you at least how to make a plot in Bokeh, because this is something that might be worth exploring in future MapPy Mondays, is how to do some more interactive data visualizations than we can do with Matplotlib in the notebooks. So from Bokeh, and if you don't have Bokeh installed, it's just conda install-c, conda-forge, Bokeh. So from Bokeh.plotting, I'm going to import figure and show from bokeh.io. I'm going to import the output notebook function. Think of it as matplotlib inline magic, as you'll see in a moment. If we run that cell, now I'm going to run output notebook. And we see that we've successfully loaded bokeh.js. Now I'm going to create a figure. I'm going to give it the title of Last Decade Hurricanes. And then we're going to do a very similar loop. So for storm number in our hurricanes data frame, storm number dot unique, storm data. is where our hurricane data frame storm number is equal to the storm number that we're working with. Then on our plot, I'm just going to call p.line storm data lawn storm data lat. And finally, when we're done, we will show our plot p. And there we go. But as you can see, the shapes of these look very different because it's just on an XY plot. It's not actually projected. For example, compare some of these landfalls over here or even this uh, looping path out here to their position on this map and the looping path. So as you can see, map projections make a big difference if you're working over very large areas. If you're working on a small area, a plot like this may be just fine, though. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MapPy Monday.